Hey, Fight fans, I'm Sarah Davis, and you're watching Fight News Now Extra. We're taking you into the weekend with some of the hottest headlines coming out of the combat world as the king lives on, and there's a new fight for UFC 155. Our MMA panel will be on to give us an earful or two on these headlines, so let's get started. Long live the king, Jerry Lawler is up and at him. After suffering a heart attack while commentating on Monday Night Raw this week, Lawler underwent an emergency angioplasty in Montreal, and here's his recent shout out to his fans. Hi everybody, Jerry the King Lawler here, still in a Montreal hospital. I feel sort of like the bionic man. I got more wires coming out of me than AT&T, but I want to thank the entire WWE Universe for all your well wishes. Thank you all. Nice to see him recovering. A look at the UFC, another fight announcement has been made. It's been six years since their first meeting, and Alan Belcher and Yushin Okami are going to battle again. Okami outpointed Belcher in their first bout at UFC 63, and now they'll have their rematch at UFC 155. With more on Lawler and Belcher versus Okami, let's shift over to our guys, John Pollock, John Ramdeen, and Robin Black. And John being, or Pollock, because there's two of you, Pollock being the wrestling guru that you are, aren't you so relieved that Lawler's okay? Yeah, I think everyone who saw this on Monday Night Transpire is extremely relieved that Jerry Lawler, suffering no brain damage despite being unconscious for a very long period of time. The EMTs in Montreal were really heroes in this regard and how fast they tended to Lawler and were able to get him to a hospital. And here he is, he's up, he's talking, he's even touting, and just a big sense of relief. And in a lot of other circumstances, had this been a smaller show or had he been at his hotel in his own room, uh, we might have had a fatal heart attack here for Jerry Lawler. Long live the king. Spooky stuff, man. Glad he's okay. We move over to the Ultimate Fighter season 16, debuting later tonight, an all welterweight season coached by Shane Carwin and Roy Nelson. Uh, guys, as we look here at 2012, I mean, this was the, the franchise that really led to the UFC boom back in 2005. We fast forward now to season number 16 that we're on the eve of here. And is it still a very relevant show that brings a lot of interest? Or is this simply something that it's fulfilling a television contract at this point? Well, that's kind of the thing. There was a lot going on at the time when Ultimate Fighter came out, and it really really broke the UFC, but also reality TV was new at that time too. Reality TV was this cool thing where you could see crazy people doing nut stuff on TV. Now we see everything on reality TV. It really doesn't capture your imagination that much anymore. And I don't know if the fighters are really at the par when you've got 400 plus fighters in the UFC already. You know, who's out there waiting to be on a reality show? And you and I have talked about it, John. I think the biggest thing for the Ultimate Fighter reality series is to see where these guys go after the show. Of course, the, the point of the show is to create interest, to see their personalities, but it's the skill set and see how they fare against the best guys in the world. And when you talk about the 170 pound division, it is possibly the deepest in the sport. Yeah, and one of the ideas that we throw out there, Robin, is that you have 450 fighters under contract right now. Why don't you take 32 of those guys that maybe people have heard of, but they don't really know much about them, try to get some of those personalities across. We already know they're good enough to get into the UFC. Now let's give them that platform so that maybe people will want to go out and spend some money to see these guys. Well, yeah, that, it's a two-pronged problem, you know? Are the fighters good enough? And do we really care? Is reality TV going to move us anymore? I mean, there's a reality TV of everything. People argue about a parking ticket and they put a camera on them. That, they call that reality TV. So I don't know. We're, we're going to have to see. With Fox taking over, Fox is a really creative television network and maybe it'll be more interesting. I mean, last season see, had some pluses and some minuses, but we'll have to see. This will be the definitive season to say whether or not this is still an important feature in the UFC. Yeah, to me, I still see a benefit in Ultimate Fighter and trying to get fans that are maybe not the biggest fight fans in the world. And rather than trying to grow your hardcore audience of fight fans that are already kind of tuning in let's try and widen the demographics here present a lot of personalities and that is something that I feel fight factory has done very well it's not really focused on fights it's about who these people are and by the end of a one-hour episode someone like a Wayne Phillips who probably yeah. no one has heard of here you genuine genuinely are engaged here in who this guy is and how he's gonna fare in this but sport. the fact is they're using this to force everybody to the shows everybody's they look, go to the Ultimate Fighter reality show to see who's successful and see if they're going to make an impact in the UFC. Wayne Phillips didn't even win the show on the Fight Factory. So why does anybody care if he's not going to be successful yeah. in mixed martial arts? Because it comes down to the fight. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, ultimately, you can pee in all the sushi you want to pee in. But if you're not a great fighter, are we really going to care about you? Right. 
I, I don't know about that. I think this is very much personality driven. And I mean, the, the ardent fight fan might have run down Kimbo Slice and his technique, but people had a real engagement in who this guy was because of this personality that was an X factor that jumped out of the, the, the internet fight fans and into an audience that really wasn't watching fights. Yeah, but where is he now? And where are those fans now? I mean, if you're going to live by the him. minute, if you're going to live by the minute of sizzle, you've got to find new sizzle every second. I mean, you can build a, f a fighter and you can build interest in a fighter that can last for a lifetime. Well, season 16 is kicking off Friday night. It's a very busy weekend. Bama 10 is going to be airing live right here on Fight Network, 4 p.m. Eastern. And next week, a very crazy week for all of us involved. We will be carrying the press conference as well as the weigh-ins and then pre- and post-fight analysis for you. UFC 152 coming up all next week in Toronto as the UFC returns to the Air Canada Centre. John Jones, Vitor Belfort will be chatting a lot about that next week. Thanks guys, and like they said, we have all sorts of shows leading up to UFC 152, including the live press conference and weigh-ins on Thursday and Friday. And you can find all our live shows by visiting our schedule online at fightnetwork.com. And we just released our new iPhone app, and you can stay up to date on everything combat. It's free and available. Just check out your iPhone's app store. While you're doing that, stay tuned. We have a couple fight previews coming up next.